everybody. Yeah, I know I was supposed to be back this summer, but things do happen as far as athletics goes at the University of Oklahoma. Of course, basketball, which we'll talk about in a second, and recruiting as far as football. National Signing Day is coming up on February the 3rd. We have lots to talk about as far as recruiting, but first, let's talk a little bit about the men's basketball team. And We knew that they weren't going to be as good this year as last year. Last year, they were one game away from the Final Four. At one point last year, ranked number two in the country, and they had the National Player of the Year in Blake Griffin. So naturally, you lose both he and his brother Taylor to the uh, NBA. And we knew that the team just wasn't going to be able to live up to expectations as far as what they did last year in comparison to this year. But still, this team, you'd expect more of them than what they're showing right now. They hit the lowest of lows this past Saturday by getting blown out at Nebraska. No, we're not talking football. We're talking basketball. A Nebraska team that had not won a conference game until this past Saturday. Oklahoma scored only 46 points in the game. Only one player from Oklahoma had double figures. That was Kate Davis. As Oklahoma's three McDonald's All-Americans, Tommy Mason Griffin, Tiny Gallon, and Willie Warren combined for 18 points. Yeah, those guys combined for 18 points, it's over. They'll lose. And that's what happened to Oklahoma. Now the concern for the Sooners, I'm not really concerned about them not making the NCAA tournament. I didn't think this was a tournament team um, probably a few games ago. I'm concerned about them trying to make a tournament of any kind. We're talking the NIT, we're talking the CBI, because the toughest part of the schedule is still coming up. I mean, you've got games against Texas. you got to play Texas twice. you got to play at Kansas. you got to play Kansas State. You still have to play at Oklahoma State. You still have games with Baylor and Texas Tech on the schedule. So, Oklahoma could lose five, six, possibly seven more games. If that happens, their overall record will dip below 500, which will keep them from postseason play. This team needs postseason play in some way because you still have most of your players coming back next year. They need practice, and they need to get mentally tough. This is probably the biggest problem for Oklahoma right now. They're just not mentally tough, especially in the paint. It's also been a turnover-prone team. So partially, I blame it on Coach Capel for not getting these guys mentally ready, but I also blame it on the players themselves for not handling the ball well at all. It's not a terrific shooting team. They don't play too bad at defense, but offensively they've really struggled this season. Again, there's the talent on this team to get to the NCAA tournament, but right now the chemistry and, as like I mentioned, the mental toughness just isn't there. As far as the OU uh, women go, Sherry Cole, this has not been too bad of a season considering you don't have the Parrish Twins, they graduated, and considering that you lost a starter guard in Whitney Hand, her Ernie earlier in the season, out for the year. But despite this adversity, the OU women have still been able to string together victories. They're not going to win the Big 12, but they will make the NCAA tournament. And I think anything bigger than the second round would be a mild surprise. But still, this is a team that guard play has ruled. Daniel Robinson and Aisha Stevenson have done a terrific job with this team. They're hurting a little bit in the paint, but still a team that will probably end up winning 18, 19 games this season, probably finish third or fourth in the Big 12, and they'll make the tournament. They've had to deal with adversity, but unlike the men, That's right, we are talking recruiting, and despite the fact that Oklahoma went 8-5 and five this past season, that really did not affect them when it came to getting some of the best players in the country. According to Rivals.com, Oklahoma with the number five recruiting class in the country. Excellent job by Bob Stoops and his staff in nailing quite a few commitments. Of course, February 3rd is National Signing Day. And looks like Oklahoma's going to have quite a few prospects signing the dotted line to play in Norman. The two biggest areas I think that Oklahoma addressed were both running backs and offensive linemen. We'll start with the running backs first by a guy, um, you're going to hear this guy's name a lot. Brennan Clay played his high school ball in San Diego. Number two running back in the nation. He's a guy that will play right away. Another guy that will probably see some playing time his freshman year is uh, Roy Finch. Finch played his high school ball at, in uh, Florida. So you have Finch, you have Clay, who should get some PT. 
because remember Chris Brown, he graduated, and DeMarco Murray is coming back, but he's had health problems, so you don't know if he's going to be able to hold up throughout the entire year. If he can't, I think those two guys, along with uh, Moses Madu, should pick up the slack for Oklahoma. This is another big area that Oklahoma helped themselves in, talking about the offensive line. And a guy that Oklahoma has really had their eyes on for quite a while, looks like he's going to sign the dotted line Wednesday, is a guy from the Oklahoma City metro area. Played his high school ball at Mustang. Guy by the name of uh, Bronson Irwin. Irwin, out of Mustang High School, 320 pounds. Number three offensive guard in the country, according to rivals. And that's a big pickup for Kevin Wilson's offensive crew. Another pickup for the Sooners, the number five offensive center in the country, Austin Woods, who played his high school ball in Texas. So those are just two of, of at least five offensive linemen that Oklahoma has added to this recruiting class. And another guy that they're in on, probably won't know till the middle of the week where he's going to go, and that is the number one junior college tackle in the country, John Collin, who played his juco ball at Cal State Fullerton. Boy, That'd be a big pick-me-up if they can get calling. So we're talking about the linemen. We're talking about running backs. We're talking about a defensive back as well, uh, Tony Jefferson. Tony Jefferson played both ways in high school, but Oklahoma wants him as a defensive back. Unfortunately for Oklahoma, not all the recruiting news was good. They did lose out on at least two guys that they really, really wanted, including Jackson Jeffcoat from Plano West, um, defensive end. He committed to Texas. He's a five-star recruit, number two overall recruit in the country, regardless of position, but he's going to be a Longhorn. And another guy OU lost out on, a linebacker by the name of Corey Nelson, and he's going to play at Texas A&M, but it looks like Oklahoma, linebacker-wise, they, they should be okay in that department. So, again, Oklahoma, pretty good recruiting class. Just got to get those guys signed on the dotted line come Wednesday, February 3rd, for National Signing Day. So there's your update. We'll have an update in a few more weeks. Of course, the spring game will be coming up in April. Spring practices in March as um, football. Yeah, there are no games on the schedule, but there's always football talk for Oklahoma, regardless of what time of year you're talking about. Catch you later, everyone.